Hello everyone, and welcome to Adobe Premiere. Now, right off the bat, uh, this is a video that I wouldn't normally put up here. This is uh, something that I do for my patrons over at patreon.com slash eganworks. Uh, for $5 or up, you can get access to behind the scenes videos, and largely those take the form of these sort of Premiere After Effects kind of behind the edit, looking at the footage beforehand and then how I have achieved different effects, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, I thought it would be fun for, you know, the month of September and since a lot of people seem to really like If Your Feet Were Hands uh, that went up a couple of weeks ago, uh, I thought this would be a, a fun video to, to do this for and to put up an example of, of what you can get if you pledge over on my Patreon. Uh, now's a really good time to join in. Uh, so if this is not something that you're interested in watching, now you know what it is and why it's so long. Uh, but if you are interested, you know, stick around and uh, maybe this is something that you might be interested in pledging for. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So this uh, is my timeline for uh, what if your feet were hands, or if your feet were hands is the, is the video title. Sometimes I forget what videos are called. I work on them for a long time, spend a lot of time with them, and then instantly they are gone from my brain. Um, this is a fun, this is a fun looking timeline, very colorful. I, I color coordinated uh, to start um, a lot of these things and that sort of fell away uh, as I as I got deeper into the edit. You know, you, sell, you try to set yourself up for success as much as you can, um, but uh, you're, you're really no match for yourself at the end of the day. Not sure why that's showing up. Uh, so what I like to do at the beginning of these is just kind of go through uh, front to back, we'll get rid of that off the screen, and um, now, that, now that I don't love looking at my girlfriend, uh, just kind of go through front to back, see what we're dealing with, um, and, you know, kind of refresh everybody's memory as to what this video is, how it plays out, what it's all about. So this is fun. Um, this didn't take many takes. Um, my girlfriend's a real good sport. <laughs> she was a good sport about all of this. Um, and just a great actor, um, for, for all of the, uh, uh, all of the weird things that I asked of her. Um, she looks really mad at me in this shot, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> the video opens up with just me and her slapping hands on the couch, you know, like a normal couple would do. And, um, when it says based on a true story, at the end of the video, when it says based on a true story, um... That is not a lie. Um, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> if your feet were hands and the floor was made of hands, this is what it would sound like if you walked along. You get the singing, and then I start to realize, oh my god, what if your feet were hands? And then so I end up in this weird kind of foot hand world, hands all over the walls, kind of glitchy. Here come the feet hands. Oh man, they're still terrible. <laughs> Even after all this time. I kind of stop and realize, wait a minute. And then you get the slow reveal. And this. Love it. What? That's great. So there you go. That's that's if your feet were hands. It is in fact based on a true story. This is not just a goof at the end of the video. Um one day. Uh, I was sitting here at my computer where I'm recording this now and my girlfriend Lauren walks up to me and we just kind of start like slapping hands like I don't know just idly doing something as we're having a conversation and then we were we were slapping and she sang this exact song uh, aloud to me if your feet were hands and the floor was made of hands this is what it would sound like if you walked along might have been a little bit different and this is basically the, my reaction to her, uh, and her reaction to me was... What? Exactly. So, um, there's your true story. Um, and then this did, you know, enter my brain, um, and I made this video as a result of it, so that's a true story to me. So, um, digging into the construction of the timeline a little bit more... Let's open this up if we can. Zoom in a little bit. Um, so 
uh, yeah, audio was very important for this video um, because you have the hand slapping. Originally, um, we, we both had some other lines, but those those things got cut. I tend to, to cut more dialogue than I put in, um, and I think that was ultimately the right choice. Originally, um, we were, as we started out, I had a, this line of like, oh, uh, what are we doing here, the old slapperoo? And she shushed me, and, and I, you know, looked put in my place, and that was sort of funny. Um, and that, that, that is the origin of why she kind of looks mad at me here, and why she slaps so hard there, because she was supposed to have just shushed me. Uh, in the script, but that got cut, and I feel like the video is better off for just kind of jumping into it. Um, so yeah, there's a couple different audio layers going on here. I, I mostly didn't keep the original audio from uh, the video that we shot, either because um, I needed to keep the cadence of the right number of slaps going, or because... Um, I needed, you know, different room noise, all kinds of things like that. So we can go in and solo out each of these tracks. This is um, hand slapping that plays throughout the rest of the video once I'm in weird foot hand world. Uh, we can solo that out and listen to it. Some of it's a little quiet. I'm not sure how well it, it'll show up in the recording. Um, and I don't want to uh, mess with the... the audio levels right now. This is just our, uh, for the beginning, the hand slaps are in here. And then we cut, and it's just room tone, which probably isn't going to show up on the recording, but um, if you don't have that, uh, if you don't, if, if, like, if this first clip has room tone and I need to use it, and then the next one is completely silent, um, so for example, if I uh, disable this clip, That's a little too clean. Um, and, and maybe you can't hear that again. Maybe it was a bad choice to go through audio first here. But um, the, the idea is, like, you will notice that if you're watching the video and it'll sound wrong to you. It's just a little, like, uh, a production value thing that, that people will notice. People will notice bad audio before they notice bad video. It's, it's much more important. Um, let's go ahead and move along here. The slapping goes back to to um, actually inside the clip and not just an audio track. For this, uh, I was able to use the audio track because you can't see our hands in these um, shot reverse shots. Um, if your feet were hands. Then this here, so if we open up this shot, this is... So that sounds different, and that's because this audio track, if I solo that out, is actually... Um, just her singing clean uh, in, in, in an audio file if your feet were hands. right up to um, the mic uh, as opposed to being as far away as she is in this shot. It's a little quieter in here and there's a little more noise. Uh, there's a higher noise to signal ratio in this shot. Um, and so for this one, it's just a little bit cleaner and I didn't have to process it uh, very much at all, I don't think. I think all I did was, yeah, boost the, the levels up a little bit. Um, so you get that. Um, and then you have room tone underneath that that I've added back in uh, to make sure that it blends with uh, the rest of the video. Uh, and then you get uh, hand slaps back underneath after this. If your feet were hands and the floor was made of hand. And then here's me uh, giving my reaction. You can see the color correction happening. Um, yeah, so color coordinated, green for her, yellow for me, um, blue for the first scene, um, and then pink, purple once we go into, uh, Odd World. Uh, back to hers, she finishes the song, back to me as I realize, wait a minute, and then we flash to white, come back down from white, and, uh, now we're in, we have these black bars, uh, I... I thought that just looked a little bit better, and I was like, it looks, maybe this is, um, maybe this is overblown, but this shot already looked so, like, Hitchcockian to me, and I was like, what if we just add, what if we just make this widescreen, um, I don't know, it's fake, and that's, I don't know, that's fine, it adds a little something, um, I just like how it looks, 
Uh, so yeah, we start out, and we will we will jump to After Effects after I go through my timeline here. But we start out with me in this Hall of Hands. We get a brief, uh, brief um, glitch transition and shot of the feet hands. It doesn't want to play super smoothly because it isn't pre-rendered. Uh, originally, I was just going to show the feet hands outright, right away. Um, but eventually I realized, you know, Jaws doesn't show the shark right away, and that's for a reason. Um, and so I settled on these little snippets of here's a little more feet hands. Here's a little more feet hands. Uh, until eventually... I, I mean, I had to put this shot in. I made it. I, I made... I committed crimes for this video. I did, I made a real monstrosity. Um, so yeah, you just have the black bars over top of everything. You'll see, uh, I think if I turn this off, you'll see. No, okay, I kept that in. Um, for, for some of the effects shots, I rendered the black bars into the scene. For some, I didn't. Um, those were for different reasons. Some of them were just because time. Um... And there's some little touches in here, like the, the undulations of the hands in the floor. I don't know if anybody noticed that. The hands are moving. Oh, the, and this shot gets its day in the sun, then. It's difficult to turn your feet into hands, let me tell you. Um, but damn it, I did it. The reaction. What? And the ending. There you go. Um, so underneath this whole thing, I've got... What is this? This is... Uh, I have a bunch of these cinematic soundscapes just, like, in a library somewhere that I've collected over the years. I have a, I have a, a ton of just video garbage in, in folders like this. Um, maybe I'll show those one day, but... Um, that should be getting picked up. That's just a little bit of, like... It's a soundscape, you know? It's just some tones underneath to kind of set the mood. Um, and then we have this, which just kind of builds tension. And I cut it. I cut it short um, to sort of create that, that, create a moment, you know? A moment for the feet hands to flex. That hard cut, instead of uh, getting to peter out, makes it a little more uh, dramatic. The clip itself comes to a natural conclusion, but it's a little bit too long for my purposes, and I, I wanted that hard cut. Um, and then this... whoops. This, rather, sound effect is just um, a little bug buzz sound effect, a, a bug buzzing. I think, I can't tell if it's real or if it's an artificially created sound effect. Um, but it's horrible, and I thought it sounded great for, like, bones cracking or, or stretch, muscle stretching or something like that for, uh, for the scene. So that was great. What? And then this is just a, uh, cinematic mega horns <laughs> clip. So I just cut off the, that little beginning part where it kind of intros itself and just went right into the right into the bois. Um, so there you go. Those are those are your sound effects. Um, what is this guy? Oh, this is just some more slapping. Oh, this is the slapping slowing down because uh, in this shot I am I'm slowing down as I realize. Hey, wait a minute. This is messed up. So that's pretty much it, uh, as far as the timeline construction goes. Um, this is a rendered out effects shot. Um, I can show you that full size without any bars. It's just me walking forward, or looking like I'm walking forward in front of a green screen. And we'll get into After Effects and show all this off. Some hands moving in the background. This was kind of a complex, I mean, most of the effects shots were complex to create. I spent a lot of time on this video. Um, it was very difficult to put together. Uh, and then the other effects shots, I may as well play out um, here in Premiere because I actually have them rendered out. If I try to play them in After Effects, they won't. 
they won't render uh, quite as quickly. This is, to me, this might be the most horrific shot. Oh, it's so, it's just so bad. The, I was able to get the blend on these just right. If you look close enough, you can see where the seam is. But, um, with, you know, with some effects thrown out over top, that looks fine. A little bit of noise, a little bit of blur, a little bit of uh, 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 chromatic aberration. No one's the wiser. And then we've got, uh, of course, ugh, uh, <laughs> also in contention for the worst. Uh, and the motion is all fake. I just I just animated myself in After Effects. I did a pretty damn good job, if I say so myself. Um, looks all right, and the shadows underneath. Um, and then what else we got? We just have the final. Yes, here it is. We just have the final. Terrible, terrible. So those are all your effects shots. Um, Had fun with this reaction. <laughs> Pretty good. We'll see what that looks. Like. There you go. Um, it was fun to shoot this with uh, with Lauren. She gave me a lot of. What? What? She gave me a lot of different takes of what. A lot of good stuff to work with, um, so big shout outs to Lauren. Thank you so much for putting up with my nonsense. Um, yeah, so that's the video. Um, I think always be saving. That little asterisk gives me anxiety, so always got to hit Control S. Um, I think we dip out to After Effects now and uh, take a look deeper into some of those effects shots. I'll see you there. All right, here we are in Adobe After Effects. This is where I do all of my compositing, all my effects shots, etc. cetera. Uh, we only have so many effects shots to go through, but uh, there's a bit to talk about for each of them. So we have this walking front uh, that we just showed in the hallway of hands. We have the feet hands coming at ya, is what this uh, sequence is titled. We have the feet hands in profile. We have a uh, point of view from the top. Uh, <laughs> we forgot about this. My close-up, um, my close-up moment of horror. There I am. Uh, and then looking down, uh, which is probably the, one of the simpler ones, um, but it, uh, it has some other things going on that I want to talk about first. So, um, I think the first shot that I worked on might have been the feet hands in profile. Um, so let's go through that really quickly. And I have, uh, you know, I have the, uh, the black bars in each sequence, just so I could see uh, what I was uh, what I was eventually going to end up with. So right off the bat, we have um, some weird stuff going on. The background is a floor made of hands. Let me solo that layer out. Uh, a floor made of hands that is undulating. I wanted all all of the hand floor, hand walls, all of that to always be in weird creepy motion so that is a sequence in itself if we open that up you can see it's gonna my computer is gonna blow up um, it is 24 layers of hands um, each one just a regular old hand let me find a good one right in the middle uh, that'll probably be around here um, so that is if we turn off key light here and if we turn off it's mask you can see this piece of footage is simply um, just me putting my um, turn this off so you can see my actual green screen here um, just here in my living room sitting on top of a green screen putting my hands down um, and it's just a still of that actually it's not even a um, oops it's not even a, 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 a video um, it's just a still image of a video more uh, more more useful and a lot easier to work with a still in this case. So I just added a quick mask to mask out my arms and the rest of the environment. So all we were left with is green, and then I threw on uh, 
key light and some spill suppression, which just gets rid of this little bit of green that you'll see. And you'll see that a lot in the rest of these uh, effects shots. So everything's keyed out. Uh, we have this just on a completely transparent background, duplicated that several times, and then went ahead and threw on um, a position uh, expression. So just a quick wiggle expression. Um, if you don't know what this means, basically uh, I told After Effects to do math. Uh, wiggle is a command which tells it to um, vary the X and Y position randomly uh, X number of times per uh, per second or per frame. I don't remember what it is now. You type in the numbers and you, you dial it a look you want. Um, to be honest, you know, you don't have to be a, a, some kind of math whiz to figure any of this out. Um, I think this is once every 15 frames or it's, or maybe it's number of times and amount. Uh, so like once per second, 15 pixels each way. I don't remember, but there's, that is what is making it, um, move up and down and side to side in this random motion basically means i did not have to keyframe uh every single frame of this thing moving uh, or guess at how long i would need it to be on screen so with uh profile with that built uh, i could then throw on uh dial in my look so i threw on let me actually turn all of this off uh, so it, it this just looked a little too pale and weird and dead. So I threw on some curves to um, kind of bring out the bring up the contrast and bring out you know all the weird like bumps and lines that your hands have, darken the shadows, brighten the highlights. Um, I used some hue saturation over top to make it a little more uniform and to make it this like eerie otherworldly uniform flesh tone. And then a little bit of blur uh, because it's supposed to be in the background. Uh, so I wanted to simulate a little bit of uh, depth of field uh, a little bit. So from there, uh, there was just the simple matter then of creating these monstrosities. So foot hand near is our friend here. He's got a little bit of color correction thrown on top as well to make it look like I'm not so... Uh, go ungodly pale um, make make me look like I have some blood flowing through my body um, so this um, has a lot of things applied to it I, I keyframed the position ro rotation myself uh, manually to make it look like it was walking um, some smooth keyframes some rigid keyframes uh, linear not rigid um, just to kind of give you that heel toe walking motion i i was really uh trying to to emulate the walking motion correctly which is a little bit harder than you'd think if you haven't spent any time making something walk uh previously so you you do kind of get that like it rolls forward heel goes up and then it swings heel goes down toe comes down so that's kind of your your walking motion um, it was fairly simple once I got the hang of it. Um, it's just dialing in the, the cadence that you want. Um, and then the same thing for the back foot, just making sure that that looked right in each frame. So uh, the feet hands uh, are, of course, <laughs> the feet hands are, of course, uh, compositions in and of themselves. So let's open them up. There is a hand layer and a foot layer, as you might imagine. If I go ahead and single out the hand layer, we can take a look at what's going on. I can turn all of this off, and it is also masked as well. I can turn that off. Once again, that is uh, a time remapped, so a still image of, uh, of me just laying my hand down on the green screen that I have, uh, just right in my living room. Uh, keyed that out, spill suppression, a little bit of lumetry to, uh, you know, dial in my color a little bit more, and then uh, some painting because I went ahead and just um, cleaned up some edges. I think it's really hard for me to tell 
what that is. Actually, that might that might become clear after the fact, after we bring in the foot. Um, yeah, so let me turn that mask back on. And the illusion is here once more. Uh, if I single out the foot... Ugh, oh, God, that looks weird. Sorry. Uh, if you don't want to see my feet, I don't know. Don't don't watch this video. This video isn't for you. Um, that just weirded me out. A regular foot looks wrong to me now. Uh, yeah, so just a little bit of lumetry color. God, I'm such a dead fish. Also, I, I shoot really flat, so you're not getting a lot of color that way either. Uh, and then keyed, keyed that out as well. Um, but yeah, I, I went ahead and like did some, some erasing to get rid of all of this as well in the final. Uh, and some masking. I just masked around the whole foot hand bring the hand back god um so yeah it, this was basically um just a lot of trial and error and um figuring out where the f hand should meet the foot trying to get veins to line up and different lines like this line kind of flows into the line of the hand um and then just trying to match the skin tone together as much as possible um, it's a shame that there, <laughs> there's not a lot to tell, honestly, for the amount of time that it took. Um, it was just a lot of time spent trying to get that hand look like, looking like it was part of that foot. Um, yeah, just masking and feathering out the mask. Uh, feathering is, is, if you don't know, it's just... Um, making the edge of a mask, which is this shape drawn here. Um, and you draw this shape to tell After Effects, you know, only show the things inside of this mask or outside uh, of the shape. Um, and feathering is just a way to make that edge a little bit softer. So if I get rid of the feathering, you can see the hard edge that um, delineates where the, the hand ends and the foot begins. So. Um, if you feather it, it becomes a little more blurred, a little less clear, and that's what you want in this case. Uh, it was the same thing for the far foot hand, um, just making things purposefully blurry. Um, in fact, I, I left the um, this is not faked depth of field. I, I left the focal point on my close foot um, so that this, this foot hand would be purposefully blurry. This is the more horrific foot hand, I feel like, because it has a thumb... It's the one that has a thumb, and that's just terrible, if you ask me. That's horrible. Um, so yeah, um, same deal, just masking and feathering and all of that, and then uh, animating them to ambulate. Uh, but that's not all that's going on in this, uh, in this scene. You also have a light. Um, I started playing around with light layers, which I haven't really done a whole lot before this video. Um, and if I turn that off, you'll see that it's really adding a sense of, like, eerie... I was going for, like, eerie, dark basement, and it really gives you that sense of, of creepiness and shadow um, that I was looking for, and that you wouldn't necessarily get if I had just turned on, like, a vignette, say. Um... So yeah, there you go. That was basically um, the construction of the foot hand in profile. All right. Uh, and then, yeah, put all that together and you have a creepily ambulating foot hand in profile. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Beautiful, horrible stuff. All right. I believe the next sequence I worked on uh, in order was coming at you here, which is important because you get this hand floor layer, which will appear later um, but let's go ahead and dig into these feet hands um, what's interesting about these uh, is that I was working on these for hours and hours I think it took me an entire day to get this the look of the these feet hands just right and um, I, I spent a lot of time and I had finally gotten the right one looking just right uh, or good enough and my girlfriend came over and I was like, I, I've been working for hours and I just got this one looking right and now I have to do the other one. And she was like, why don't you just mirror image the one you already did and then you'll have two. And I was like, oh yeah. So uh, that's what I did. So we're only gonna look at one of these feet hands here. Um, 
it's just horrific to look at, isn't it? Um, yeah, so, you know, fairly similar stuff going on here. Um, a lot of masking, obviously. Um, if we can look at the, yeah, let's look at the original hand. Um, get rid of all of the effects. I have a couple of masks, just masking out. You know what, let's take a look at, yeah, there's three masks here. They're all subtract masks, and they're all masking out other things. I love this shot because it kind of makes it look like I'm doing a handstand. If you don't notice the shadow from my legs out of frame. Uh, no, I'm just I'm just making a very wide stance, um, putting my hands down on the green screen in front of the camera here. Um, so I subtract out all these other bits so we don't have to worry about them. Key out the green screen, a little bit of lumetry to blend with the foot, um, and then there are a little bit of, um, a couple of little imperfections in the hand here, so I painted them out bit by bit with uh, the eraser tool. Um, that's for later. Eraser tool, eraser tool. Um, yeah, just, just painting out little things that would help sell the effect a little bit more. So when I, when I get the foot in there, uh, this doesn't look right. And the reason is I left one more effect off, um, which is this Bezier warp effect, which, uh, again, I don't think I'd used before. I recently started, uh, I found it for this and I realized it was perfect for my needs. Um, basically it creates these handles on the edge of the frame that you're working with and you can pull those in to create a warp, um, and then the hand just sort of warped into place. Um, and that that is looks good enough for my purposes. Um, coming at you is where we were. Um, and then, yeah, it was basically that. I, again, it's, it's a shame that there isn't much to say about all of the time and trial and error and trials and tribulations that it took to get the feet hands looking right. Just know that it took a lot of time and it was hard and sucked. <laughs> but it turned out well in the end, so it was all worth it, I think. So I got that foot hand looking right, mirrored it uh, by simply, uh, you just go right click, transform, uh, flip horizontal, or vert I, I always mix these two up, I think it's flip horizontal, so it flips left for right. Um, and then it was just a matter of animating them once again, so uh, 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 this time they're coming at the camera, so it was a little more difficult. Um, just had to make sure I got the cadence right. Um, uh, and also I'm animating the floor to move this time um, because the it's supposed to be like the, the camera is moving backwards as they come towards you, so the floor should be moving. Um, which just meant that I had to sort of believably match the uh, speed of the floor to the speed of the hands, which is simple enough. You can do it backwards. You know, you can animate the feet first and then animate the floor to match. Uh, but you want to make it look like it's sticking to the floor and then moving forward. Um, so yeah, that animation, it's, uh, I made them 3D layers, uh, which means they look a little bit flat if you look a little too close because it isn't my actual 3D legs moving. But, um, yeah, they're, they're sort of rotating in inwards in Z space, if you can imagine that. Um, and then sort of coming forward. It looks like a one of those uh, ATST chicken walkers in Star Wars a little bit. Um, oh, I actually forgot to talk about in profile something that's happening here as well, is that I made the shadows for each foot coming down. Um, you can kind of see it getting more faint and then stronger as the foot comes down. You can see it a little more clearly here. You can see the shadow follows the foot. It gets stronger as the foot gets closer to the floor, quote unquote floor, faint as it comes up. It, it just really helped sell the effect here. If I, if I turn that off, you can see it, it, it looks spaceless. It looks like it isn't, you know, the shadow helps place it on the ground in space. You know, with that in place, you can see it is touching a floor made of hands. Um, so yeah, I did the same thing here, um, which is just simply a uh, a layer of black 
um, that I masked around the foot hand and then uh, turned down the opacity so it was very faint um, and then we have a spotlight going on here as well if I, it's like turning on the lights and seeing a bunch of spiders um, so you get that creepy sort of spotlight uh, uh, vibe going on in here as well and now finally it's time to talk about hand floor let's open up hand floor <laughs> and see see what we've got going on here this is um, 72 is at the end yeah 72 layers of hands um, just singular ah, let's find a good one singular hands uh, and again they all have a position wiggle uh, expression applied to them so they are all moving um, independent of each other in just the the eeriest way possible that's quite enough um, can we get here let's get a let's get a close-up on that yeah enjoy that just awful um, so again this is the same these are all Photoshop layers um, so I can't really drill down but it is basically an exported uh, frame of um, um, just laying a hand on the green screen so imagine that it's the same thing uh, and then some some different effects applied to it I uh, I'm unable to show you for this there must be um, there must be a, a further uh, comp of this somewhere and I'm sure there is but um, yeah I, I didn't have that ready so apologies for that but you can kind of imagine what's going on here a little bit of color a little bit of curves maybe um, just cutting out the hand basically um, and then putting it into this big old uh, comp where um, nothing is moving um, you know in any specific direction so the hands are all just undulating then once you've got that uh, I took that made it the floor and if I zoom out you can see placed it uh, in 3d space uh, tilted it so it looks as if it's in perspective and then as the scene moves it moves back uh, to create the effect that we're walking forward on this hand floor um, all in all, it's pretty simple stuff. It just takes a very long time to render. Um, yeah, let's take a look next. Now that we have our hand floor, I think we can... Yeah, this uh, POV top will make a little more sense now. I might save that for last, though. So let's talk about walk front. Um, in walk front, we have hand wall. And hand wall is similar to hand floor in that um, you know, it's, it's probably the most interesting part of this scene to talk about because otherwise it's just me um, in front of a green screen walking forward and that's basically it. a little bit of lumetry applied to me um, and I cut out my my binky rules shirt as well because if I don't then uh, the uh, the uh, key light effect gets the color wrong because there's a little bit of green in there so you have to mask out uh, your shirt on top of that so uh, that's a whole thing. Um, it's not that that big a deal, though. If we open up hand wall, there's a fair bit going on here. So hand wall is actually um, something that I rendered out. So this is hand wall 2. Um, and I should have hand wall. Yes, hand wall is... An enormous comp that I created and filled with hands. Um, it's oh man, it's really not going to want to render this. If we zoom in though, uh, you can see that they are moving. Yeah, my computer is being very loud as I try to render this out. Um, basically, it's enormous and they're moving. I rendered that out as a video, and then created this comp. Um, sometimes. You know, I could have also pre-composed that, put this comp inside of, put the handwall comp inside of here and, and created this motion, but that just would have, you know, some, you got to know where your, your bottlenecks are. And uh, in that case, it was better to render it out as a video, bring it back in so that uh, you could make some simple motion out of it. So basically, I brought that humongous video into 
a smaller sort of uh, video size comp. This is a 1920 by 1080 comp. I'm saying comp a lot. Comp is short for composition, which is just what you call the thing that you're working on in After Effects. Each of these is a composition. Um, so inside of Handwall 2, just created the uh, illusion of moving that gigantic uh, handwall shape through the frame to make it look as if it is moving to once again create uh, the illusion that we're moving forward through hand space. So I've got one over here behind me, one over here behind me. It's just duplicated, mirrored, uh, and then uh, made it a 3D object to uh, swing it around, put it in perspective, place it in 3D space. Uh, and then when you put that over top, uh, uh, or behind rather, uh, footage of you pretending to walk forward, which uh, we can take a look at here by opening this up. Hello, very close up on my face. Uh, that is just this. Da, 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 da. Just pretending to walk. Luckily I got the light um, just right, so the, the key was able to be very sharp and clean. Uh, very happy with that. Um, so yeah, just keyed out. I'm in front of the hand wall. Um, these are both animating. Uh, added a little bit of curves just to bring out those those lines and colors and shadows a little bit more. Um, and then added another spotlight on top of everything. Jesus. Without the spotlight, it's really quite horrifying. Um, so yeah, just adding another 3D spotlight layer kind of gives you, sells the effect that bit more and gives you the vibe that you're going for, which was, again, creepy hand basement. Um, worth noting here that light layers only affect uh, layers that are switched into, um, th that are 3D layers uh, by clicking this little cube. So um, it's not affecting me, uh, which I wanted because it leaves me free to dial in, you know, the color and the look later in Premiere when I'm cutting this together. But if I were to turn that on, it would look like that. Um, and since I'm now in 3D space, I'm clipping into the hand wall, and that doesn't super work for me. So we'll switch that off. And then, yeah, this is what you get. Uh, if it will, oh, it really doesn't want to render. Yeah, it'll, it'll render out slowly but surely. Um, I don't think there's any, are there any effects applied to me? No, I'm not, I'm not moving at all. Um, you get a little bit there, uh, but you can see it in the final video. So yeah, that's, uh, walking. We went through coming at you, profile. We can move to POV top last. Um, these are the easier shots. Um, the close-up of me is basically just a duplicate of walk front, uh, just with a different piece of footage. Uh, it's uh, footage of me horrifyingly realizing that my feet are hands. And then I just placed that in the same scene that I had before. You know, you get your, uh, get your black bars to kind of hide the crime of uh, playing around with your video layers. So that this is one where it is baked in, I believe. Um, so that you can see, you know, I, I wanted to crop things different sizes so that it would fit... Um, uh, the frame in a way that I wanted, uh, but otherwise this is the same, the same scene. Uh, and then looking down, um, I put even less effort into. Um, here I am looking down at my feet, hands, um, and then I just have hand floor in the background here. And I've simply because I couldn't, I couldn't find a great way to achieve this effect with the green screen. And I'm thinking now of ways that I could have maybe done it, but um, I don't have a green screen set up that bends very well. Um, and it's very large and wieldy, and I don't have a great way to like hang it on the ceiling or whatever. So this was the best way for me to achieve this. I just uh, uh, drew a quick mask around myself, feathered it uh, to hell. Um, but also this sort of like, the, the floor can be hands and the walls can be hands. The ceiling doesn't need to be hands for me. Um, I don't need to be encased in a hand cube. Um, I don't know why. There, there can, you, you know, I'm sure someone can read into this video 
uh, more than is, is needed or necessary and can come up with a reason for why there should be fewer hands and just like the ghostly image or, or suggestion of hands up above, but um, I don't necessarily have it for you other than it was a constraint of my work at the time. Uh, and that can be enough. So this is just, again, hand floor. I skewed it uh, in 3D space uh, in a way that would make it look like, you know, again, it's in perspective. You're looking at it from this below angle. Added in the spotlight to kind of bring in those edges, um, the, the shadows in the edges. Um, but otherwise, yeah, not, not much going on other than just some color correction thrown on me here. Uh, all right, then with that done, finally we can talk about the POV top shot. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to go through all of these at, at a pretty good clip and not get too technical. Um, let me know in the comments, though, uh, if, you know, if this was too deep, not deep enough, if you'd want to see more of this in the future. Um, actually, if you do want to see more of this in the future, again, you can head over to patreon.com slash eganworks, sign up for $5 a month, and you will get one of these for every single video that I post to YouTube. All right, uh, shill out of the way. Our final sequence here, our final composition, is the POV top. So once again, we have hand floor. We've talked about hand floor. We don't need to talk about hand floor anymore. Uh, I did create some shadows left and right for the feet hands, just to once again place them in space uh, and you know keep that continuity of they've had shadows beneath them this whole time. Why shouldn't they now? Uh, spotlighting from above again to give that sort of look that we're going for and uh, bring out bring out the things in the hand floor that we want all right let's get to uh the good stuff so this was more difficult than any other foot hand sequence because there is motion in it these are video layers these are not stills uh the feet uh uh, uh layer is a video, each hand is a video, nothing is, uh, nothing is freeze-framed, basically. Um, yeah, so all of these are, let's go through the pieces, all these are obviously keyed out, key cleaner, a little bit of paint, um, a couple of masks, there are four masks on this one, uh, if I turn those off, you can see, sorry, I keep showing my feet. You can see the shot itself. It's just me simply standing on a green screen. Uh, key all that out. Clean up the edges a little bit with this key cleaner effect. And then I used some paint to uh, clean up some areas just to cut a chunk out of my foot. It looks weird now, but um, that was necessary to blend hand to foot, uh, as will become clear. So these three masks were subtract masks. I'm cutting off the fronts of my feet uh, and a little bit of weirdness uh, left over from a bad key, basically, uh, that I just wanted to key out, uh, a little bit of visual noise. Um, and then one add mask, and those are the feet. Then hands, I actually did in individual layers. This is one piece of footage, um, but they are individual layers. I uh, wasn't able to show you there. Here, I can uh, if I turn this off here. If I solo this out, turn off the effects, and the mask, you can see this was done in one big, one big go. Here's my knees as well, if you want to see that. Um, so basically just masked out the hand that I wanted, keyed it out, key cleaner, and then later on went in with some cleanup paint to further blend the hand with the foot. Um, yeah, and the reason, the other reason for doing the hands individually was just so I could, I, I wasn't going to 100% place my hands in the right configuration that they would stick onto my feet correctly. Um, I, I had to angle them out differently because I stand kind of duck-footed. Um, is that a thing? Is that just the way people stand? I don't know. Uh, so I, I had to rotate them each, you know, in the direction that the foot was pointing, uh, and I don't think I was doing that in uh, in the piece of video. So cut them out individually, 
is a basically a basic way you can think about it. And then, um, yeah, just again, a lot of finding the sweet spot. Um, if I take the feather off of the mask, you can see kind of where I started placing this hand here. Um, and then uh, if I take away autosave, always, always have autosave on, very important. If I turn this paint effect off, you can see there's a little nubbin from my foot. And maybe you wouldn't have noticed this, but it's kind of going in and creating a weird contrast. And so I just erased that part of my foot so that that's gone and it is all hand and that line is a little more continuous. Um, and then I think uh, a little bit of the same thing over here. I did some... Uh, oh, and I want to put that feather back as well. Let's hit undo until it comes back. There we go. And hand R. I did a little bit of painting as well just to get rid of the shadows and contrast that were being created from my hand and blend things in a little bit better. So the feet hands aren't one-to-one -one with each other. They blend in different ways um, just by virtue of the hands look different, the feet look different. That's gonna have to happen uh, if you want to blend them correctly um but otherwise yeah it's all green screen and masking and uh lining things up to make sure that when i played the video uh and wiggle my wiggle my fingers so this was the shot that i was envisioning that was like this is my swing for the fences <laughs> uh i really want to be able to pull this effect off to make it look like uh, the fingers are wiggling. God, it's gonna take forever to render here, but uh, you get the gist. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really glad that everything stayed like lined up and uh, uh, blended correctly to make it look real enough for the amount of time that I needed it to look real. Um, and you got the, the fingers slash toes of the, of the feet hands wiggling. I thought that was great. All right, I think that's about all uh, I have to show you here in After Effects. Uh, I have all my footage, you know, here all set up and ready to go. I did some early tests of, you know, maybe I can just walk in place uh, and not animate it myself. That turned out to be a little too difficult. Um, I thought maybe I could, oh, this is just a hand. I thought maybe I could match the motion of my feet up with my hands. Like, if I'm walking like this, yeah, I tried that a little bit. That didn't work. Um, that angle was also weird. So, yeah, in the end, uh, just had to just had to take stills of everything, match them up, and uh, animate it all myself. Um, so, there you go. That is, uh, God, just hours and hours of work here in After Effects. I think it all paid off. Um, I will see you back in Adobe Premiere in just a second, and we'll finish this thing off with color and dialing in the rest of the film's look. All right, welcome back to Premiere. Welcome back to the hell foot hand zone. Um, so basically all that is left to talk about here is um, some color and uh, some other sort of finishing effects that I threw on top of everything. Um, I can go ahead and pull this down a little bit so we get a better view. Um, so first of all, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it in the recording, but I threw a little bit of noise on top of everything. Um, if, I, if I go ahead and zoom in to 100%, you can see the noise coming in. And I just like that sort of grungy, grimy contrast that it brings in. Um, there are times when I don't want that. I don't always want that kind of look, but, um, largely I do, uh, and I do in this case. So I went ahead and threw that noise on top, uh, just to get that, that extra little grungy, grimy look. Um, and then if I go back to fit, so we can see the whole image here, uh, our color correction is, uh, a lot, I believe, oh, uh, okay, Premiere, I might not be able to show you this, because Premiere had an update, and it kind of wiped out, or, or changed in some way, 
all of the LUT information that I was using. So I don't know that I can show you. I had I had this happen where I updated Premiere and then suddenly all of the LUTs I was using, which is basically color looks, uh, were all black and white. So the video I was showing off was all black and white. Um, so I, I won't go deep into that now, but basically I threw a LUT on top just to give me a color look to go with, blended it in, uh, took down its intensity by about half, um, and then did a little bit of correction in here, um, boosting the contrast, boosting the highlights, darkening the shadows, that sort of thing, um, just to give it a little more of a grimy, you get a little more of a green, a little more blue in the shadows. Um, it makes it feel a little more claustrophobic and sweaty and a little bit more cinematic. Um, and it just, it turns this hand tunnel into, it, it just finishes it off. It turns it into something really grotesque and beautiful uh, in a way that I love. Um, and then, yeah, for, let's take a look at the rest of these effect layers. There we go. If I turn off this adjustment layer, that'll get rid of the... I have uh, glitch uh, glitch transition presets uh, that I play around with here. Um, some noise again. A lot more noise this time because I really wanted to obfuscate uh, things to begin with. And then again, a little bit of color just to dial in, you know, cool off the shadows, uh, make things feel, you know, kind of grimy, grungy, sweaty, and just dial in that uh, sort of final filmy look. Um, same thing here, uh, more glitch effects going on. Can switch those off. Yeah, same thing, just a lot of noise and then color correcting uh, in much the same way. Over here, we've got a little bit of chromatic aberration going on, which is basically where you get the color RGB split uh, into into three separate um, layers. Just makes it look a little glitchy, a little otherworldly alien, um, like something is playing with your perceptions or senses. Um, and then again, noise, lumetry. Same thing again for uh, for this guy. Um, oh, I played these in sequence to give you, you know, a better look at at what is coming. Um, played this guy again so you could see the full foot and frame needed to get that shot in there um, And then yeah finished this shot off with some noise and some color you can see a lot of work being done there by Color correction just again adding in some greens and blues into the shadows uh, uh, Heightening that contrast making things feel more claustrophobic and weird and then this final shot I have some some Gaussian blur Blurring your vision um, so that uh, uh, I, I wanted the, the reveal to be a ramp up. And you get that ramp up with both um, the removal of the, of the blur and uh, the introduction of this uh, sound effect that we talked about earlier. And then the zoom. And there you go. You finish it off with that sound effect. There's also actually one more thing going on that I failed to mention earlier when we were talking about sound that I just noticed, which is... Uh, oh, that's the wrong layer. It grabbed the wrong layer. Thank you. If your feet were hands. I just grabbed uh, another instance of this uh, song audio layer that La Lauren is singing. And I applied um, some reverb and uh, slowed it down a whole bunch. Speed duration, it's at 55% speed. Um, so I can solo that out so we can hear it in the background playing. Just playing, echoing in the background. I felt like the soundscape this this handscape if you will needed a little bit more i just felt like that helped dial in the horror a little bit more than just what we had earlier um so there you go i think that about does it that is how i made if your feet were hands. It took uh, a lot of time, 
a lot of effort, a lot of After Effects, but I think it paid off. If your feet were hands and the floor was made of hands, this is what it would sound like if you walked along. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive, this look behind the scenes into how I made If Your Feet Were Hands. If you enjoy content like this, I do something like this for every single video that I put out here on YouTube over on my Patreon. You can check me out, pledge for $5 at patreon.com slash eganworks, and you will get every single one of these that I produce. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy, uh, have enjoyed the videos that I've been putting out in the past month, uh, in the past little while here, and will continue to do so as long as I have the energy and time for it. Uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. Otherwise, let's go out on the, the ghostly image, the, the horrific image of me in a hall of hands. And I will bid you all farewell. Have a nice day, and you'll see me soon.